32 months ago, we launched ChatGPT. And since then, it has become the default way that people use AI. Today, finally, we're launching GPT-5. OpenAI just released GPT-5, and it's a monster. Let's take a quick look at this demo. That was Sam Altman kicking off the launch of GPT-5, what OpenAI is calling a major upgrade on their path to AGI. For the first time, this model doesn't just answer your prompt. It decides how deeply it should think about it on its own. Let's break that down. And GPT-5 performs exceptionally well on a range of academic evals across subjects. It outperforms both our previous models and other models on the market. In every model before this, you had to choose. Did you want a fast response or a thoughtful one? GPT-5 eliminates that choice. It adapts in real time. It will automatically think whenever needed, delivering a more comprehensive, accurate, and detailed answer to you. Just as Sam said, it's like having a, a team of PhDs in your pocket. So what just happened? She asks a basic question, gets a quick, accurate response. No delay. But the second she asks something harder, like generating a live animation, the model pauses, reasons, and shifts into a deeper mode, all automatically. That's new. You're not telling it what to do. You're not switching to a special reasoning model. GPT-5 decides what the task requires and acts accordingly. Now let's pivot, because reasoning is one thing, but what about tone, emotion, judgment? This is where GPT-5 separates itself. It's not just finishing sentences anymore, it's writing with context. You can feel the difference when Christina reads GPT-5's version. The phrasing, the pacing, the emotional clarity. None of that was directly in the prompt, but the model understood what the moment called for. That's what makes GPT-5 feel like more than a tool. It's starting to respond with intention. Next up, you'll see exactly what that looks like when it builds something real. One prompt a full language learning game, code, logic, visuals, all done on demand. Now here's what's crazy. The model doesn't just respond with text. It builds a working, clickable, live game. You can actually play. It generates the buttons, the layout, the logic, even the feedback system right there on the spot. Jan didn't lift a finger to write code. GPT-5 did everything. That's a product designer in a box. But now let's flip the switch. What if, instead of building things, GPT-5 starts teaching? Hey chat, could you only answer to me in one word, please, from now? Absolutely. What you just saw was real-time voice tutoring. GPT-5 listens to what Ruchin says, hears where he's getting the pronunciation slightly off, and then gives him spoken feedback, syllable by syllable. It's not just repeating phrases back, it's correcting his tone. It's encouraging him when he improves. And it's doing all of that live. No lag, no script, just a fluent tutor inside your laptop. Now, imagine that same level of intelligence, but with memory. It's been amazing to see your reaction and response to memory and ChatGPT getting to know you more and more over time. Notice what's happening here. GPT-5 doesn't just answer questions anymore. It remembers that Christina has been training for a marathon, that she prefers running in the evening, that she likes to travel with earplugs and a neck pillow. It remembers what matters to her and uses that memory to proactively help her plan, follow up, and stay on track. This is a big shift from reactive assistance to thoughtful collaboration. Christina didn't have to spell out anything. GPT-5 pulled in her Gmail and Google Calendar, figured out where she had space to run, reminded her about a pending email, all in one thread. So let's take a breath here. We've already seen GPT-5 reason through visuals, solve code, and even play language games. But this next section shows something more fundamental. The model's evolution in handling real-world ambiguity. So in addition to mitigating hallucinations, we've also spent a significant amount of time mitigating deception. That might seem like a minor back-end update, but it's not. What Saatchi describes is a meaningful shift in how AI models are trained to respond to complex or risky queries. Earlier models would either block the prompt entirely or comply without question. GPT-5 does something in between, without losing usability. It's a direct response to dual-use challenges, like how to balance openness with responsibility. And right after that came a real-world case of how that shift is already affecting people. 
Carolina story isn't about medical advice. It's about how far AI has come in interpreting technical data, contextualizing it, and helping users make sense of information under pressure. Eight months ago, she used GPT-40 to decode her cancer biopsy. GPT-5 goes further, not just explaining terms, but surfacing follow-up questions, identifying missing data, and helping patients come to the conversation better prepared. That's not artificial empathy. That's improved comprehension and retrieval working in tandem. This is what AI progress looks like in 2025. Fewer flashy tricks, more robust core behaviors. The foundation is getting smarter and more reliable. That shift becomes even more obvious when you see how it helps developers build and think. Adi Ganesh showed GPT-5 as a new kind of teammate, one that can follow strict instructions or infer your intent and get creative, all from the same short prompt. It doesn't just write code, it builds, tests, and self-corrects in real time. It creates UI layouts that actually look good without hand-holding, and it understands abstraction and design at a level where developers now defer to its taste. That's not a coding assistant, that's collaborative intelligence. Michael didn't test GPT-5 with toy problems. He gave it a real code base. The model quickly found a non-obvious architecture trade-off his team had made weeks earlier and even explain why they'd done it. That's a different kind of intelligence, not just generating code, but understanding why it exists. And in their live demo, GPT-5 didn't just identify bugs in the OpenAI SDK. It generated a plan, read unfamiliar files, made code edits, backtracked when needed, and fixed the issue on its own. All this running inside Cursor, a tool now powered by GPT-5 for every new user. That's what it means to move from impressive outputs to intelligent workflows. After all the coding breakthroughs, Olivia Gottemann stepped in to show where GPT-5 is headed next, the enterprise. Over 5 million businesses are already using OpenAI's models, not to experiment, but to ship. From biopharma to banking, GPT-5 is making real-world work faster, more accurate, and more intelligent. Amgen is using it for drug discovery. BBVA's analysts cut weeks of work down to hours. Oscar Health found it to be the best clinical reasoning model they've tested. And it's not just businesses. Two million U.S. federal employees now have access to chat GPT with GPT-5. This is no longer about future potential. It's happening. Then came the announcement of GPT-5. GPT-5 Mini and GPT-5 Nano, available starting today via API. And finally, Jacob Pachoki, OpenAI's chief scientist, closed with a reminder of the bigger picture. GPT-5 isn't just a product of years of engineering. It's the outcome of a deep, ongoing quest to understand intelligence itself what it is, what it can do, and how to make it safe and useful for everyone. It's still just the beginning, but from what we've seen already, it's clear we've crossed into a new era. If you made it this far, let us know what you think in the comment section below. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.